Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The one rank, one pension issue for which the pensioners of the Indian Defence Forces have been agitating for the last several years has been announced by the government. Accepting the demand, the Defence Minister said that the commitment of the Modi government has been fulfilled. However, the Prime Minister himself had to clarify yesterday that those who retire voluntarily will also come under the OROP scheme after the Defence Minister had specifically announced that they were being kept out. The Defence Minister said that despite the huge financial burden, the scheme, will, the scheme will still be implemented. The veterans who had been on a hunger strike have withdrawn the strike, though they have said that the protests would continue as most of the demands have not been met. Today, we will look at what the government has offered and what is it that the veterans are still demanding. To discuss this, I have with me Ajay Prasad, former Secretary, Ministry of Defence, Government of India, Air Vice Marshal, retired Kapil Kak of Centre for Air Power Studies, Commodore retired C. Uday Bhaskar, Director, Society for Policy Studies, Captain Alok Bansal, Director, India Foundation, and Sujan Datta, Editor, Strategic Affairs, The Telegraph. Welcome to all of you. Sujan, actually, I would like you to, you know, give us a clear idea of what has happened yesterday and day before. Well, the most important thing is that the government has accepted the principle of one rank and has committed a substantial amount of central allocations to it. The defence minister has put the figure between 8,000 and 10,000 crore in the first year, plus the arrears would total about 12,000 crore to be paid in four instalments over two years. However, there are still some steps that are yet to be sorted out. As you mentioned, there is the unresolved question of who will be excluded. What did the defense minister say that mean when he said that those who have taken voluntary retirement will not be uh, given OROP? The prime minister did clarify part of it in his speech yesterday. However, questions still remain. In future, we can expect that uh, till the notification is out, which Defence Minister Parikar said would take 15 to 30 days, we can expect some amount of negotiation to go on between the veterans and the government and also among different quarters in the government itself, involving the Defence Ministry, the Finance Ministry and the PMO. Okay. Yeah, Marshall, how, how, how do you look at this? I think Sujan has put it extremely well, uh, except that, you know, the announcement on the acceptance of the principle of OROP, uh, the ex-servicemen have some very severe doubts there. Uh, some very lightheartedly say that this is like the yoga, pranayam. When you breathe in, you accept the inspiration principle of OROP, but when you breathe out, it's not accepted. <laughs> because the equalization is important. If you, if you widen the equalization to 10 years, then there is no OROP, because the pay commission then takes care of it. The narrower this band, the better it is. And this is what the requirement that has been projected. They have also compromised. They were talking about annually. But I think the ex-servicemen league, which is... But now, is, the, it, it, according to the defence minister's announcement, it will be once in five years. It will be once in five years, and this is on the basis of finance minister's unequivocal enunciation that there will be no compromise there. So there is very little leeway left for the government there. The second issue is uh, that of... I mean, in a sense, uh, what Sujan said is absolutely right. Because what is being sought to be done actually through the introduction of what is termed the VRS. Now, I wore a uniform for 40 years. I have never heard this expression, VRS. We haven't heard about this in the no, defense. Actually. So obviously, there are, they are not informed people who are briefing the RM. I mean, the RM should know when he goes to them and the chiefs are with him, all three chiefs are with him. They would have been equally surprised, what is this VRS? The, the, obviously, this has been to temper down the cost outlays which the government will have to go uh, do. But the fact is, once there is a pensioner, whether the pensioner has sought retirement two years before or a pensioner has done his full term, 
he remains a pensioner. They are therefore one rank, one pensioner. No, but after the Prime Minister's clarification, isn't, hasn't that been sorted out? It, it, it only partly in a sense that we don't know what is this VRS really. I mean, is it for the person who's actually a pensioner? Then, of course, PM has clarified. There is no doubt on that clarification. The third point is, I think this is a larger point, Girish. We have actually now exposed to the nation the malaise of civil-military relations, warts, moles, and all. Now, this for a democracy like India, it sends wrong signals to citizenry, to society, to the armed forces, and I dare say, in a globalized world, the whole world. Now, this is a, India's armed forces are you, known what the you're world saying is, you're, What you're saying is a very, very serious matter. It is not that there were no tensions before between the Absolutely, civil and military. Absolutely, not a couple of crores here or there. But bigger point of where are the armed forces in state and society? I'm afraid okay. if this agitation has proven one thing, that the government and the society and the media like yourselves they have to bring this train back to the rails to ensure there is coherence, stability, and very amicable relationship between the armed forces and the civil Okay. Service. Uday Baskar, how do you look at this? You know, have some of the things, the, the agitator, the, the, the veterans who are, who are sitting on hunger strike, some of their leaders are saying that only one of the demands have been met. Which is that demand? I think what has been accepted is the principle of the OROP. As the principle of out OROP the has been, had, been, had been accepted by the previous government also. Yeah, but you know, the logic was that even UPA2, when it was leaving, they said that we accept it in principle and there was a token budgetary allocation right. of 500 crores. Then there seemed to be some ambivalence between UPA2 and the first year of the Modi government. And you will recall that in the run-up to August 15th, there was all kinds of speculation about whether or not it would be announced. Even at that stage, you know, the ignominy of August 14th when we had the Delhi police and so on, it seemed as if the government had not quite committed itself. The PM said on August 15th at the ramparts of Red Fort that he made a very earnest and solemn commitment. That, I would say, was conveyed through Defence Minister Parikar when for the first time he spoke about a budgetary allocation which was between 10,000 crores, which Sujan has given 10, the detail. Crores. I think that was important and it is post that that when the veterans sought clarification whether or not those who sought premature retirement which is the appropriate phrase and not VRS not as VRS. Kapil has pointed out I think PM has done a very very I would say prudent political decision while he ostensibly went to Haryana for a metro rail project he took the OROP and clarified he respected the institution its contribution and told everyone who was within listening range that as far as OROP is concerned, everyone who has retired from the service, whether on superannuation or pre -retire premature retirement, will be eligible for OROP. I think that is what assuaged the veterans. The PM is to be commended for that. But that having been said, I would like to extend Kapil's point. No, but, you know, here I would like to... The Defence Minister in his press conference on Saturday clearly said that it is not... Yeah. He, the yeah, personnel, he said it's personnel not who retire... Who voluntarily, voluntarily retire will yeah. not be covered under the OROP scheme. Exactly. This was his statement. Yeah. That was the dismay on that evening. Because right. after that no, press but conference... No, I, I'm, I'm wondering why the, in, in these 24 hours what happened? Yeah, why was that standing? My taken? interpretation is that the kind of response that was elicited both in Jantar Mantar and across the entire community that this is very unfair. It's a case of giving with one hand and taking away from the other. The because we are told that about 40-45% of the people... Are people who seek premature retirement. Right. So, and I also would like to say that I am surprised as someone who's also been in uniform for as much time as Kapil, how did the RM allow this particular phrase and the issue to come into his briefing? Because 24 hours prior to that press conference, the veterans had no inkling that the premature retirement category would be a different issue. Meaning that till now the whole debate was, as I said Girish last time, from 1947 to 1973, the government of India had allowed the OROP for the military pensioner. The review was being done every year. Something changed in 73. For 42 years, successive governor, prime ministers from Indira Gandhi, right through the Congress, NDA 1, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, two terms of UPA 1 and 2, allowed this problem to fester. That, to me, is the greatest, I would say, diminishing of the Indian democracy, 
that you have civil servants who allowed this issue yeah, to fester for about, 42 years. Yes. So, so I think we have all lost in this. Everyone has diminished the Prime Minister, the civilian bureaucracy, the elected representative and the military all stand diminished and we need to, I think, restore the equipoise in the institutional arrangement for India's democracy to be back to its old text. Okay. It's not only the 24-hour period that you're talking about. The For the premature people, it has never been a point of discussion exactly. between the Absolutely. ISM and the government. Absolutely. All through these years. Okay. So Alok, how did this come see, up? Alok, uh, how do you look at this? No, let no, me... Has, has, no, my, from what Phil uh, uh, are saying, you know, actually there is nothing has been resolved. No, I don't think so. No, I think I, most... Except, except saying that... PM know, has clarified, we accept PM's word. I think no, that's a big point. I yes. think... The minor detail is really about the review, whether it will be one year, two years, we five years... We will come to that review thing. But, you know, my question is this. My question is I this. I have just what got a mail from resolved? Major General Satinder Singh, which Sat says... Satbir. Satbir, Satbir, Satbir Singh, Singh, which says very clearly that most of the issues have been resolved. There are only three issues on which there are contentious issues. One is that it has not been fixed uh, at the top of the scale which they are saying that that will be fixed, uh, the pay will be fixed at the mean of the scale. The second is review at five years. And third was, of course, this VRS issue, which has been resolved. Incidentally, let me tell you, just after RM said so, Rajiv Vardhan Singh Rathor, Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, made very categorical statement. I think within an hour of that statement, that there is no VRS in armed forces. And anybody who is retired under the law will be given pension. Not, now, no, let, Raja, me, let me make, no, let me make it very clear. This is actually the bureaucratic that. intransigence yeah. which did not want to grant OROP that this word VRS was put into the RM's uh, brief at last minute. Because till 24 hours before that, this word VRS was nowhere there. As you know, the bureaucracy has been holding back on OROP at every stage and they have been trying to thwart it. It has taken government interference at the highest level to ensure that this OROP comes through. At every level, at MOD level, the bureaucrats held back. At Ministry of Finance level, the bureaucrats no, 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 held let back. Not get, no, no. Let us not get into that. No, we were discussed no, that enough. That's uh, the truth. No, no. But today, what, that, that what has happened, what has been announced, and what is what remains to be announced as far as the veterans are concerned, what, what is it that's because. Even today, the veterans are saying, we'll continue our protest. September 12th, they've fixed a no. date. It's supposed to Let have an all-India... Let me tell you India, what, what they have India, said. You know, no, what they have said. Protest. They have broken the fast. They said they... They've broken the fast. They have... They'll continue the... Uh, the agitation will con uh, continue. Why the fast. should the agitation continue? Huh. Why should the agitation been... continue? I must tell you, because yes. their major issue, the only point on which I think there is certain uh, uh, grievances on this five-yearly review, because... The veterans wanted that, that there should be a review every year. Uh, the government uh, has not accepted it. The veterans had agreed to a by, uh, every two-yearly review, but it has gone to five-yearly. Now, again, to my mind, again, I, I have not really calculated. It would not really make much of a difference. Because what will happen is, uh, ideally speaking, if a chap has put in a certain amount of service, his pay pension should be fixed at that level. But whenever you shift over from one pay scale to pay commission to another pay commission, different people join it at different levels. So as a result, there'll be a differential. Now, this differential should be minimized if you had actually reviewed it, it every two years. It's about 760 or 780 crores. It's a very small crores, amount. Which compared to the 10,000 crores is peanuts. It's because peanuts. when you made an issue into a national issue, sentiments are involved. Veterans are going on fast unto death. I mean, that kind of a spectacle is, I mean, it's distasteful. Absolutely. But why do you bring them to that stage, Absol as uh, both my colleagues have said? It's the because the bureaucracy is, uh, of course, bureaucracy has a role. I'm not doing bureaucracy bashing. They have a role. But here is a prime minister who has committed himself. Why is it that the defense minister goes counter to that and then prime minister has to... As to I mean, that is slight... That, 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 that is certainly disconcerting. Sujan, Sujan uh, you know... One of the things which has been uh, which has been uh, announced by the defence ministry is about forming of a judicial one-man judicial commission, which the veterans don't want. They want a five-member commission. But what is this commission supposed to do? One second thing is, you know, until the commission comes out with a report, can we say that this has only been accepted in principle and it will be only implemented after the commission gives its report? I think we need to wait for the government notification. There is often a lot of devil in bureaucratic detail. Uh, what the 
Defence Minister said on Saturday was a one-man judicial commission will look into anomalies. Yes. We have seen such anomalies cropping up in the case of previous pay commissions. And it has taken years, but they have not... Uh, they, they were not fully and finally settled. Even today, there are complaints from within the armed forces of anomalies not having of anomalies of the sixth pay commission not having been settled. Uh, the defence minister also said the judicial committee will give its report within six months. Yes. The veterans want a five-member committee. That uh, General Sadbi said uh, on Saturday should be give, given a remit of six weeks within which to submit the report. Uh, we really do not know to what extent, how the averages will be fixed, uh, a point that Captain Bunsell uh, raised. Uh, all of these questions will be put forward, put to uh, the Judicial Committee. Okay. Udhar Baskar, what is, what is this Judicial Committee? And also the fixing of the base year, there is some... Uh, you know, yeah, between 2013, 2014. Yes. I think just to again extend the point that Sujan has made, he's rightly pointed out the kind of detail. This particular one person commission that's being referred to would really, I think, get the views of has all there the been, stakeholders. Has, has, there been, has there been a president like this in, in the past? Not yet. Having this kind of a commission? No, no, because the OROP has never come to such a situation. Such a situation. Till now, as I said, after 1973, all the provisions for the military were being addressed under the banner of the Pay Commission. Right. And as again, Sujan rightly pointed out, the third Pay Commission, which is when it is reduced from 70% down to 50%, then you have the fourth and the sixth Pay Commissions, which introduce two anomalies, to use the word, the rank pay and the band pay, as they called it, and made out a certain framework which was detrimental to the military pensioner while giving a benefit to the civilian pensioner. I think that is the place where, Girish, it is really about justice. And I do want to make this point, this entire last six weeks, we have seen the word demand of the veterans, demand of the veterans, demand of the veterans, meaning that there is a certain unreasonableness about what is being sought. Whereas I keep saying, we are trying to restore a certain distortion that was deliberately introduced in 1973. Yes. So on your channel, if I have the time, I want to make a very strong plea. This is Rajya Sabha. I think our system should look inwards and first of all find out why did the defence minister make such a statement about voluntary retirement Absolutely. over a 24-hour period. And if the PMO really has the patience to address this issue holistically, <coughs> go back to the 1973 files and see what was the commitment made there on what basis did you reduce the pension of the military pensioner from 70 to whatever and why was that one-year review which had been done for 26 years with no computers, with the same workforce. Why can't it be done now? So I would beg to differ with my other panelists and say, if the principle was in vogue for 26 years, it can be brought back now in 2015. And the one-year review is not such a mathematical challenge as is being made out to me. The government of India does this for their civilian cadre every year. Every year. They'd have this for the NFU. No, that is... A, that is so no, I I'm still not able to understand... Uh, uh, Air Marshal Kark, I know I am still not able to understand when they say that, you know, they have said, the minister has said that 8 to 10,000 crores, 12,000 crores as far as arrears are concerned. Where is the problem now? Is the, you know, you said about 700, 800 crores. One second thing is the gap between the, you know, uh, I, I was reading somewhere that even after this, the gap between different pensioners will still exist. Is it correct? There are minor gaps will happen unless you do a revision every day or every month. Now, that, that is acceptable. I don't think the IE, uh, Indian Ex Servicemen's uh, League, has been unfair. In fact, they have shown great maturity and deferred to the Prime Minister's announcement on the OROP. But the issue is, and I think Sujan made this point, uh, Uday again made this point, problem is that civil military. It is this whole distrust situation. Judicial Committee, what will it do? We have seen in the past, government has gone against Supreme Court's judgments on relief to the defence services. Can you imagine a government going against its own defence services before a court? I mean, court has no... It's completely just in every sense of the term. Third is, until that Government of India notification comes out, the veterans are not going to give up this agitation because in the past, once again, Announcements have been made 
but what you see in black and white is completely at variance, something like the 24-hour cycle of the defense minister and the prime minister. This has been a characteristic for the last 45, 50 years. But, but this is very unfortunate. Al but Alok bigger, Bansal... point, bigger point here is after that notification is done, the judicial committee which is sought to be made has to have veterans' representation because it can't be a one-man commission. Completely disregarded. It can't be a one-man commission. It cannot be and should not be because you're back to this, back to square one. Because so they Bansal, will have never any you know, faith. Despite, despite the much uh, celebrations the other day that you know it has been announced, it has been implemented, the promise has been fulfilled. Still, there are so many questions remain. See, you must understand that this problem has been lingering for 42 years. Mrs. Indira Gandhi had no business to reduce it. Thereafter, successive governments have persisted with it. None of the defence minister could ensure that this OROP proposal could go from MOD. The bureaucratic stranglehold over the Ministry of Defence had been so strong. No, no, we, we have spoken no. enough of the bureaucratic See, stranglehold. We haven't spoken I want, anything no, I about want, it today. No, no, but I want let me to make it very clear. Water, what, what Mr. Parikar ensured that it went. No, the bottlenecks is the bureaucracy's stranglehold. <laughs> so it's actually a fact. Because even after MOD sent it, every stage the bureaucracy has been interfering it. And now, even after this was accepted... No, which means that the bureaucracy has hold more hold, hold the political executive than the political executive is not able to See, political manage executive the does not have that, that sort of to... time to go into the nitty-gritties. Like that VRS clause was inserted into the final statement. This no, let, sort me get, of... no, let me get uh, Sujan. Sujan, what is your in, uh, you know, information? What are the bottlenecks? Who is creating it? Why is it happening? We were surprised to hear the word voluntary retirement uh, from Defence Minister Parikar on Saturday. Uh, I personally thought that I didn't know enough, so I spoke to a number of uh, <laughs> my, my sources, officers and uh, yeah. soldiers, and, uh, and they told me, they explained to me, look, there is premature retirement, that every officer who serves for 20 years gets a pension, uh, is entitled to a pension. Likewise, every soldier below officer rank who has served for 15 years is entitled to a pension. But some officers choose to retire after serving 20 years, even if they might still have go some on, service. They, they might have service till the age of 54, because they think that they do not have enough career prospects given the steep pyramid in the military. So that is premature retirement. No, no, but you know, how did that... Bansal says that it has been, it, it was, you know, sneaked into the statement. You know, is it possible for something so big to be sneaked into a statement of the defence minister? I will Why say I was very surprised. Possible? I mean, it Why has is been it done. Possible? It I has been done. Reading motives into the government. I'll, I'll, I'll get... it has so, been Jack, done. What do you think? I don't have hard information Who on how the words got in there, but it was surprising. It was surprising. Now that no, no, now that it, the prime minister has clarified. Is that is that issue? But you know, still our friends here say that you know they're still not uh, convinced that everything is uh, as far as that issue is concerned because other issues are still pending. The prime minister has addressed the issue. Questions, however, remain. What uh, are the, the questions when you when you say questions remain? Are those questions different from what Kapil Kak or Uday Baskar or? Letter comes out. Alok you can Bansal always say? have this bureaucratic mischiefs. I think the veterans are waiting to see if there is any differentiation among the retirees and what kind of differentiation there is. That should be explained in the notification or the government order when it when, is out. When is, the, when is the notification expected? The defence minister said between 15 and 30 days. So that so is I'm regardless... by the end of this month. So that the, the, uh, the, the Judicial Commission has nothing to, uh, nothing, nothing to do with this. The notification will come on its own. The Judicial Commission will come back with its report much later. In the Defence Ministry, we were given uh, the understanding that the formation of a judicial committee would be part of the notification. Okay, that'll be, that's interesting. You know, Girish, I was just about to say that I think Sujan and the Telegraph should take a patent on this phrase, the devil is in the bureaucratic detail. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to Because I think till that particular notification is not made public, the three principal issues that the veterans have been seeking clarification on, one is... Will the review be five years as suggested by the minister? If it or is five it be, years, it is not acceptable to I the... I think the, as Kapil says, the veterans are saying we'll accept two years. I am being even more fundamentalist, if I may, saying that the principle was really an annual review, which the GOI had done for 26 years. So let's and not... And it continues to do for the civil service. And they do it for the civil services. But so the that is my point is... is okay. But at the same... Just, I want to say that 
you know, we do not want a resolution where either the government of the day or the veteran community have to bring it to a standoff and say, we won. No, we want everybody to win in this because of the civil-military relationship that we are speaking about. The Indian military has always deferred and said civilian political control is always the one who will call the shots. Absolutely. This should not become an example where major papers are saying that you're holding a gun to the government's head. We don't want that kind of a situation. So I think also... personally, the veterans have said two years. That's reasonable. Now we are stuck on the equivalence, the maximum part of the pension no, I, or the one minimum. One second. You know, to play so the, one issue at a time. You know, to play the devil's advocate here, you know, the, the criticism is that you, know, you, you find it all over the place. Criticism is, is two things. One, you are... You are being, you know, you're taking it, making making an emotional issue out of it. One second thing is you're taking maximalist stance. No, I'd like to answer that. I think uh, you you used a very good word, demand. That this is being demanded by the ex servicemen. I know it might sound a cliche, but remember what Chanakya told Chandragupta Maurya. He says, if the Mauryan army. Uh, is demanding their rights, it is the saddest day you can have in Magat. I'd like to remind the viewers that just a couple of months ago, Barack Obama addressed ex-servicemen. And do you know what he said? He said, it is my duty as the President of the United States of America to ensure you have a shelter over your head and you have a decent pension so that you can live a life of dignity. That is what India's state needs to do for the armed forces. I mean, this point we are missing. Secondly, so you, 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 you are, you are, as far as the emotional factor is concerned, it's justified because Uday just told you. I think the viewers don't know. Suddenly, I mean, irony, ironic uh, situation. The armed forces <coughs> of India, for the first time in its history, thousands of years of history, win a war, create a country militarily. The most outstanding use of strategic okay, you're power about in seventy-one. Okay. No, and one and a half years later, what do you do to those armed forces? This Pension is, is reduced from seventy-three okay. to I'll, I'll, I'll look the maximalist I mean, position. What else do you, you need? Can't... This is no maximalist position. This is justified reasonable, position. Reasonable. This is position. what is a reasonable position. The bureaucrats have actually been demeaning services right from the time they won the greatest victory. If you see from seventy-three till two thousand fifteen, okay. every pay commissioner status has been lowered. Last words. Quick last words. I think the You're, Prime Minister has retrieved no, is, the situation. Is there, is, there, is there a meeting ground? There is. Of course. I think there is a meeting ground. I want to repeat this on your channel. The PM has intervened, I think, at the appropriate moment and clarified that as far as the big issue of OROP as a principle, it is accepted. Now we have two or three sticking points, which I personally believe they can be a modus vivendi. We already see this in relation to the five-year review and the two-year review. But I still make a very strong plea that the spirit being approached should be one of mutually consensual acceptance. Okay. And I think the government has the responsibility to be just. That's all they are seeking. And I okay. Think, I, I, I think servicemen will also be reasonable. Yeah, reasonable. Okay. This is a there time is, between Sujan, the notification You, you, and you expect some some kind of a mid-ground being found in, on these issues in the next few, few days before the notification is issued? Yes, I expect so. Okay. so there, there has been a directive from the political executive. Okay. I think on that note, we need to end. But the fact is that there are still questions, as all my guests today have said, and hopefully these questions will be answered satisfactorily to the, uh, as far as the veterans are concerned, so that you know they need not go back, go back to the streets. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue of the big picture same time tomorrow.